Hi friends, it's Nate again with Exley Apiary. Welcome back to one of our weekly open apiary days. Today we're going to check my favorite hive. And the reason it's my favorite is because it's so docile and it's so productive. These are an Italian Carnolian cross. They're very gentle, very easy to work with. We're going to be specifically looking for their honey stores to see what they've been putting away. It is just the beginning of June. So for us out here, we're about mid flow in the honey flow, uh, getting towards uh, the end of it. But I had to put a super on this beehive last week because they were just doing so well that they needed more space. Now, in case I hadn't mentioned in another, in another video, this piece of plastic just acts as an inner cover. <clears throat> it basically keeps them from putting all this propolis on the lid and making it difficult to get that lid off. So it's just one additional barrier. It's a little, a little easier to remove as well. I really don't even need the smoke, but because they're so full, I'm going to do it a little bit, smoke them a little bit. Just as a precaution. Already it's looking good. If you can look down from the top in between the frames and already see them capping over honey, then that's a good sign. But let's look, see what's ah, in here. I don't have a queen excluder on this hive, so when I moved this super up, last week the queen was actually in here and i'm hoping that she has moved back down to the main brood area it looks like she has i don't see any eggs in here so that's good that means they should start filling this with honey instead of with brood yep no eggs Filling it out well. Good, that's what I want to see. <laughs> if this is your first video that you've watched with us, you're probably wondering what the heck am I using for beehives, and they're actually upcycled styrofoam coolers that I uh, pulled out of a dumpster. Alright, this frame is full, full of larva. She's got a couple of eggs in here, so she might still be up here yet, we'll see. But I really want her to move her <clears throat> operation downstairs, so that way they can fill this up with honey, and I might get honey this year, but I'm not, not too concerned about it, because this year is not a honey year for me. I'm really working on multiplying my hives and building up my apiary so if she just builds a great big hive for me then I'll be happy with that as well I'm gonna scrape off this propolis here we'll keep that you can use propolis in tinctures with alcohol and it serves as an antibiotic it also is excellent for gut and gum health so I wouldn't recommend chewing on it because it can stain your teeth but it does help if you put it put it in your mouth hold it under your tongue or just keep it in there it does help improve the health of your gums and it has been shown to have some anti-cancer properties as well. So it's not strictly an antimicrobial. It's an antiseptic and an anti-cancer agent, which is really neat. I'll pick this stuff out and set it aside so we can use it later. I'll try out some tinctures with it. As a refresher, these open apiary days are just an opportunity for us to open up one hive and go through what would be a normal checkup. There's nothing too special that we'll go over. We'll just address what we see as we see it. I have not gone through this hive beforehand, so it's a, each weekly open apiary day will kind of be a mystery box as to what we find. And I think that just makes it more fun.
this frame was previously not built out. They put comb on it. That's good. I want to see my halves continually building comb. Now that, that puppy's filled out. This one's heavy. All full of honey. All right. That's all I need to see for this box. I'm going to go look a little lower down. I mainly wanted to get an inventory on what honey was here, if, it, if there was any available for extraction. And uh, looks like there's really not much to speak of. This space is still mostly taken up by brood, which if I wanted to, I could have prohibited that with the queen excluder, kept the queen down in the bottom. But like I said, that's not quite my management goal right now. Maybe later. Nice frame of brood. For those of you who are brand new to beekeeping, I offer a Beekeeping 101 crash course where we'll go over this more in depth. But just for this moment, this brown, these brown kept over cells, those are brood. <clears throat> Those are baby bees who are pupating right now and getting ready to hatch out. So brood is different than honey. This is some honey kept over honey. There's just honey behind those wax cappings. So you see the difference between those two? This is honey, that's brood. And then of course the open cells, if you look down in the bottom, you can see if there's larva or eggs. And it's a little difficult to see with this lighting. It's just not bright enough. Um, but if you check out some of our earlier videos, there are some good, good shots of eggs and larvae. But the Beekeeping 101 crash course is free. I believe it's five lessons. It goes over the fundamentals of beekeeping, some honeybee biology, some simple, um, simple things that you'd need to know to get started. It is definitely not an advanced course. Um, I didn't intend for it to be. It's aimed more for somebody who needs beekeeping described in layman's terms. Um, and we go at a pace that's a, a little bit slower, but because it's on video, of course you can go as fast as you want. All right, I'm done working this box. I'm gonna close it up and check the lower boxes. I have been very impressed with this queen. Like I said, she's a carniolan Italian mix. And I got her from Texas Bee Supply up here in North Texas. And she has done nothing but impress, both with the just the way they work they're very diligent bees and how docile they are all right we're gonna go ahead and move this box down i'm gonna put the plastic back over it to try to keep the robbing down Anytime you have your hives open, you're opening them up to the risk of robbing. So it's really important, and just for clarification, robbing is when bees from another hive come to a sister hive and they steal resources from it. They're robbers. Um, and you open your hive up to that possibility anytime you open the lid. So you always try to make checkups quick. Try to do them a little bit earlier in the day, around 11 o'clock when most of the bees are out in the field. Uh, interrupt this really quick. This is the empty super I added last week. They're still not doing anything with it, which is fine. I didn't expect them to do anything with it this quickly, but I just want them to have the room so they don't get the idea in their heads that they need to swarm. Let's go down another level.
All right, this is the brood chamber where the main brood nest sits, where the bulk of the bees are born and raised. This hive was originally what we call a cutout hive, which is a hive that I removed from a building. I had to cut it out of a brick wall. And then I, uh, I didn't get the queen with it. It was queenless, and so I bought the queen from Texas Bee Supply. And she has been faithfully performing her duties ever since. But that's why I was pulling rubber bands out of the hive. I use rubber bands to keep that cut out comb inside my frames. All right, this frame is a beautiful example of pollen. We saw honey and brood earlier. Make sure there's no queen on here. Here is some more brood. And then if you see, look down in the bottom of these cells, the bright yellow is pollen. And pollen functions as the bee's protein. It's their bee bread. They'll collect it from flowers, stuff it down in the cell with some of their digestive enzymes. It ferments and kind of does the uh, goes through the same process that a sourdough bread might go through. Similar, not the same, uh, just for sake of illustration. And then they eat it. Specifically, they use it to grow more brood. So at this point in the checkup, I've already seen how much honey they have. That's answered that question for me. I know if and when I should come back to extract honey from this hive, and I've, I've seen that I don't really need to worry about extracting honey from here. They're not blocking themselves out yet. I've seen that they do have a good functioning queen. She's laying well. You could tell that just from looking up in the last, uh, not the last box, the first box. I'm just seeing all the eggs that she had laid and the excellent brood pattern. The, the brood pattern wasn't spotty at all. I can also see it looking here. So the last thing that I'm looking for are queen cells. A hive of this size, this late in the season, runs the risk of swarming. They feel like they're out of space, so they start making a new queen. So as I check, I'm looking for queen cells. That'll be a telltale sign that they are thinking of swarming. Unfortunately, quite a few of the hives that I have in my apiary have been more swarmy than I've had. I haven't really dealt with bees so swarmy in the past, but I've had a lot of swarmy bees. And they have queen cells on this frame. This isn't a really great example, but just to show you how nondescript and easy, easily hid. This one's already torn open. You can see the gap there. It got torn as I was pulling it out. If you open it up, this elongated cell has larva and royal jelly in it. And that would be a queen if I hadn't messed it up. So I'm kind of disappointed to see this because I'm going to have to do swarm preventive measures on this hive. And that's more work on my end, but totally worth, this hive is totally worth saving. What I might try to do is go ahead and split it. Another way to prevent swarming is to remove the queen for 10 to 14 days. This also serves to break up the brood cycle and it also helps control your varroa mite population. It breaks their, um, it breaks up their life cycle as well because you cease the production of brood. And since they have no brood to lay in, varroa mite require that brood in order to reproduce since there's no brood in there. They, uh, they have a break in their generations and their exponential increase. But this is the middle of the season. And if I take the queen out for any duration of time, it's going to put them behind. And I don't like to do that. So I'd like these guys to keep chugging along and I wish swarming was not, not part of that. I must have added 
that super a little too late. They were already feeling the pressure to swarm. A rule of thumb that I've tried to practice but I've fallen short of is supering frequently and supering early. Especially in the months of early spring, so they never feel the need to swarm. They always have enough space. That was my goal. I do not have a ton of equipment though, and I'm also a little bit leery about leaving them so much space to guard and take care of, empty space. I didn't necessarily want to put on supers that they weren't ready to utilize, um, so I didn't. And it appears that I'm paying the price for that now. So, if you're an experienced beekeeper watching this, I would welcome your input as to the risk or rewards of supering frequently and early, if it's worth the, the risk of adding a bunch of extra space for them to have to manage, um, or if it's better to just bite the bullet and keep, that extra, keep those extra boxes off of them until they need them. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Oh, here's our beautiful queen. So she doesn't come this way. Texas Bee Supply marked her for me. Courtesy. She's right here, the yellow dot. Beautiful. I do not want to lose her. If they swarm, she might just try to fly away. So i got to figure out what I'm going to do keep them from swarming. beautiful frame of eggs. I haven't seen any other queen cells, which is unusual. If they're thinking of swarming, they'll usually put their whole uh, their whole workforce into putting together queen cells, and you'll see 10 or 13 or at least 5. They might be in the early stages of swarming. We might have caught them just as they're starting to get ready to do it because the queen's not stopped laying eggs. Another sign that they're very close to swarming is that you'll not see any more eggs because the queen will have stopped laying so she can slim down for her flight. But she is still laying abundantly. So I think what I'll do is I'll just destroy any queen cells I see and I will check them every seven days and continue to destroy those queen cells until uh, they either get it out of their head that they need a swarm or until I'm ready to split them. Alright, this is an old Swiffer pad, unscented Swiffer pad that I put in the bottom of my hives for hive beetle control. I talk about this every week, so you've probably already seen it. And uh, not to beat a dead horse, but I've been impressed. Very impressed with how many beetles it catches compared to the Better Beetle Blaster hive trap that I've been accustomed to using. It's 
another short plug. Wouldn't bring this up if I didn't think it was helpful, but you can see there's a lot of hive beetles stuck in those fibers. And that's more than I've ever found in an oil trap. So I'm happy to use these instead, even if it catches a few bees in the process. I'll go ahead and smash the beetles that are in here. Throw it away and add a new one. They're also easier to use and clean out. All I have to do is pull out the old one. There's no messy oil spills, no uh, no weird plastic getting stuck to the propolis and jerking out weird. Just take it out, put a new one in. And that's all there is to it. All right, we're almost through with this hive. Got two more frames to check. I'm gonna smoke them lightly. They're being robbed, so they're becoming a little more aggressive. And I can tell that they're being robbed because I see other bees that have different coloration buzzing around and landing on the frames and these bees are a very distinctive gold blonde color that's their italian carnelian genetics carniolan excuse me so it's easy to tell them apart from other bees other genetic strains still not seeing any queen cells so that's giving me a little bit of hope that maybe they're not thinking about swarming after all maybe that was just a large drone cell that we found who knows so we're going to treat it and be cautious because a hive like this is worth a lot. And we're going to do our due diligence to just check and make sure. So a quick note on frame turning etiquette. If you have a frame with foundation in it, like this one, or this one, that foundation, the foundation is the black plastic that we provide to the bees that they build their comb off of. If your frames all have this black foundation, they're a lot sturdier than frames that are built free hanging. As in, they're built just in this wooden frame. There's no foundation. They just built the comb straight down from the top bar and built it out naturally. Now there's no, this one's not better than the other. It's just in my apiary and in your apiary, you may end up with both. You turn each frame differently though. So when you're checking it with a solid plastic frame foundation, you can turn it any which way you want to because that, that foundation is going to keep it steady and it's not going to let that comb fall out. However, when you have a frame that has free, uh, free built, free hanging comb, you have to be more careful and you can only turn it, <clears throat> I guess what would this be? On its X axis, something like that, you can only turn it like this. So if I wanted to look at the other side, I'd have to turn it up like that. And there you go. Turn it in again, back down, there you go. The reason for this is because if you turn it this way, that comb is still brittle and it can fall out and break off. So with your free hanging frames, don't turn it like this, turn it like that. So that way it has, still has the support of the frame around it. And that was your introduction to frame checking etiquette. All right, we're done here. Let's go ahead and close this beauty back up and move on to the next hive.
Try to put your frames back in the order that you took them out. I had to take out two frames so that way I could get out that Swiffer pad. But uh, you don't want to disturb the sequence of the frames because they, the bees have built the brood nest and have the eggs in that pattern and they take care of them by location. So if you change things around, they're not necessarily going to get the age of the eggs mixed up, but it does put them behind as to what went where and managing and keeping that warmth because they distribute, the queen lays the eggs and the brood in a, a specific pattern that most efficiently distributes the heat from the developing larva because just like a chick, uh, the developing embryo of a chick puts out so much heat, the developing eggs and larva also generate a certain amount of heat and so they put it and they, they, they build their nest in such a way that it maximizes that energy output and, and puts it back to work. So you don't want to mess that up too much. You want to keep that brood in the middle, you want to keep um, it in the same sequence that you found it in. So that way it doesn't mess up their system. The bees are incredibly organized creatures. If you didn't know that already, that's what makes part. That's what makes them so fascinating. Their organization makes this one of the most efficient units on the planet. Efficient at protecting themselves. Efficient in communication. Efficiency in reproduction. Some breeds are better than others, and that's part of the genetic game: is to find bees that are the most frugal, find bees that are the most that are the most disciplined, uh, and in the case of VSH or Varroa sensitive hygienic queens, finding bees that are more hygienic, that are better housekeepers. And you can breed for that. You can breed for those characteristics. So I know that my queen is back down in the bottom box. That's good. Hopefully she'll stay there. That way they focus on putting the honey up here and then they'll put the brood down in the bottom where she's at. And hopefully she'll stay there. Which beekeepers use queen excluders to help ensure that she stays in the place that they want her to. But that's not actually entirely required. Bees will naturally put honey towards the top of the hive right above their brood chamber. So they naturally segregate it. We put queen excluders in there to help make sure that they separate it exactly where we want them to. Right now I'm just using the natural separation of an empty box to help them make sure they put the honey up here and then the brood downstairs. I'm going to do a little record keeping. Do this for every hive right after, immediately after you check it because if you're like me you're not going to remember after you've checked 15 hives and you're back at the house and you're like, wait a minute, what did I do with hive four? So what is today? Today is the 4th of June. Saw queen cells, a queen cell. We killed it. And there's nothing else noteworthy to add. To end this video, I guess I'll go ahead and go over some of my note taking, how I keep records. Put this marker away. Um, but before I grab the phone and bring it over here, I would encourage you to use duct tape instead of masking tape. The masking tape tends to bleach out and lose the marker. And then also, don't use any off brand Sharpie. Use an actual Sharpie because it lasts the UV rays a lot better than any of the other stuff. I use off brand uh, markers, black markers. I thought anything would work and it turns out it doesn't this Texas heat will burn it off in no time and then you don't have any records on your hive so use a sharpie use duct tape
the shorthand on this, it's up to you what kind of shorthand you want to use. Um, I learned this system from French Hill Apiaries. Uh, that's pretty simple. You start here at the bottom. I've got here, it's hive number one. That's the date, March 26th. Um, this shorthand is understood to me. It might not be stood, understood to everybody, but you use whatever shorthand makes the most sense to you. This was a hive removal, HR, that's what that stands for. Had no queen. I added one quart of feed. I keep track of how much sugar water I feed each hive so I can know out. I can know if they come out net positive at the end of the year um, by how much honey they produce. So I'll calculate, I keep a tally of how much sugar water I give them. Uh, on the 1st of April, I gave them a queen, added a queen. It was an Italian Carniolian cross from Texas Bee Supply. Always write your queen down, whether it was wild and where you got it from, just so that way you can know later in the year if this queen happens to be a poor performer no you'll know not to get them from that supplier again but in this case tbs provided an excellent queen and i will go there again i also fed them one more quart of sugar water uh what else do we do fourth of april their queen right the qr uh the queen is marked yellow so i added plus one queen plus one i added one quart of sugar water the 9th of April, they're still queen right, so that's good, plus sugar, sugar candy. I didn't do sugar water, I did sugar candy I had in the freezer sitting around I needed to get rid of. One gallon of sugar water was a one-to-one -one ratio. 16th, they're still queen right. They have three frames of brood. Sometimes I'll put how much brood they have in there just so I can kind of gauge their growth. It's not critical, and I haven't been doing it consistently enough to really see the benefit of keeping tally of that. Um, but it is helpful to know what you put in, what you pull out. Here I have negative one FE, and that stands for removed one frame of eggs. The queen, there's still a queen in this colony at that time. I took a, that frame of eggs and I added it to one of the other colonies to help it out. So this tells me that this is a working hive. This is how much I fed it. This is what it's given me, one frame of eggs. You know it's not honey, but still, if I can take frag, a frame of eggs or a frame of brood from this hive and give it to another colony, it's still serving as an asset and as a, as a good working uh, working member of my, my apiary. Um, and I, I can keep notes and go over that in the winter to know that I want to keep the, this strain of genetics. I already know that this queen is a good performer and she's such a good performer that I can take eggs from her. She produces enough that I can take a frame of eggs and give it to another colony and she still produces great. So that's a little bit on the record keeping. We're gonna go ahead turn off the video for today. If I was to go through the whole apiary with you, it'd take about three hours, four hours. Um, and frankly, I don't think you'd stick around that long to watch the whole thing. Uh, but this has been an open apiary day, probably week three, week four, I forget. <clears throat> Come back and see us again. We'll do these about once a week or once every other week when we get the chance. Again, leave your comments in the section below. Also like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and uh, I'll see you next time. It's good to see you again.